we've been rehearsing at a at a little rehearsal place and just getting warmed up for uh, and geared up and psyched up to do, do the tour. Rio should get us in the groove. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, usually you don't play those gigs till the end of the tour. You know, <laughs> we're doing it backwards. That's how we do everything. Yeah, it's though. backwards. But we'll we'll be we'll be ready for real. No problem. Gig with everybody involved in a long time, especially you know with two new people, right? It's the first show that we've done. It was fucking no matter how many technical problems we had and this and that, we fucking had a fucking blast, you know. And I, I could turn around and we we it was like turn around and and it was those people that I know so well, you know. It was great. There's not one single solitary thing in my life that it comes close, you know, or it has. Any is, has any kind of priority over this band ever since it's before it really got going when we were doing clubs, all right? I'd sold whatever it is you sell a long time ago, <laughs> you know? And even when I was fucked up, I was only fucked up because of this band. I mean, so it's always been like that. And I'm just really happy to see it, you know? And I'm also because of the new material and stuff, it's like when you're really proud of something, and, and there's just so many things in it that I'm so proud of and I'm just really excited. So, you know, it, it's all I think about. I hate to think that was all a big farce, <laughs> you know? That's where the bullshit stops right there. Yeah. That's where the bullshit always stopped. You know, it was all the other bullshit that made it everything difficult. When it came down to, to the people we play for, the, you know, whoever it is out there that we entertain, that was always the simple part. It was everything else that makes it so fucked up and so complicated and so unenjoyable sometimes. I was going to see Jesus. I promised you hard and heavy fans we were coming down here with Guns N' Roses. Here you are, on top of the world in Rio. Well, I was figuring about 100,000 people, but it ended up being 140,000, so it was quite a nice little warm-up gig, you know? <laughs> a lot of fun, really, you know? And uh, really my first rehearsal with Axel in front of 140,000 people, so it was interesting. For me, it was kind of wild because, you know, it was the first time I've ever heard him sing with the band, with me playing, you know? So a couple times when he'd do some screens and stuff, you know, kind of throw me for a second, maybe, you know, mess up my fill or something, you know. When I joined the band about eight months ago, you know, everything was in turmoil, you know, and uh, the band's really come together. And we, you know, we pumped out a lot of tunes for this new album, and you know, everything's going really well. I wanted to play drums like from the day I could talk, you know. Well, not right this second, but. <laughs> What was the question again? <laughs> I forgot. Bruce, tell me. Uh, what made me start drumming? Yeah, yeah, what made you get into it? Um, I just music? always wanted to play drums. I got my first set of drums when I was about five years old. You know, I was just always banging on things, you know, I don't know. My first band I was really into was uh, probably Black Sabbath. 
you know, during like junior high school. I guess that's what made me hit drums so hard because I saw Black Sabbath and, you know, his drumming was just so amazing, Bill Ward, back in those days, you know. And uh, I liked his power. And then I got into Zeppelin and all the, all the stuff that the rest of the guys are into, you know, Errol Smith. And they told me about five minutes before I was going on, I had to do a drum solo. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> that's the first time I've ever done one. So uh, and then he introduced me to the crowd and, and I kind of went, well, what do I do? Solo. Hi, this is Matt Storm, our new drummer. Hello, folks. My Pally Pal, Rhythm Section. He did the whole record, if anybody wants to know. And, uh, album's being mixed, and off we go to Rio. First live gig with Matt playing drums. 170,000 screaming kids. Two nights. So that's <laughs> two times, that's uh, 340,000. Times $20, no. <laughs> <laughs> The band began the year at January's Rock in Rio Festival with two new members in tow, keyboardist and occasional conga man Dizzy Reed and former cult drummer Matt Sorum. And it ended up being the best thing that's ever happened to the band. You know, it made us a lot stronger as a group. You know, we got to be friends again in a different way because the tensions to make a new album have been so hard on us in L.A. You know, we're getting it done, but, you know, we really ended up needing this. It was kind of therapeutic. Well, that was yeah. my, Rocky Rio. I mean, yeah, right. that was my first gig with the band. Right, you were like. You and know. since then, I don't think we've played a gig that big. We have. No, no, no. There's yeah, no gigs in the world. I think we it's never matched. Uh, you, we I, do I, some I, summer, man. <laughs> I know the samba, man. No yeah. problem. I want to thank Rio for being so responsive, so into it. It's great. It's amazing. The thing is, it's like, uh, you know, we have, there hasn't really been a lot of rock and roll bands down here, right? So I think people are a lot more, you know, freaked out about a band coming down of our stature or whatever. Because when we play like in the United States or even Europe, some parts of Europe, with the exception of like the Latin countries like Italy and Spain and, and Portugal, they go just as wild, don't they, pretty much? I mean, it seems like the Latin countries are the wildest. Yeah, I remember, sort of, yeah. But I remember that they told me five minutes before we went on, do a drum solo. And now, and I was really, when I, once I went into the drum solo, I was really glad that I did, because, you know, uh, the crowd went crazy. It was fun, you know, it was a lot of fun. And I haven't stopped doing them since. You know, I've done a solo every night since then. It gives Axel a chance to, uh, to relax, you know, because he sings so much and everything. It gives it, him a break. West Hollywood Sheriff Hall. <laughs> uh, we should talk about their special secret hat that no one's supposed to have. <laughs> Hi, I'm Axel Rose of Guns N' Roses. Chavezu na MTV. Thanks, Martha. I'm still backstage here at Maracana Stadium in one of the hundreds of little shops that dot the concourses here. This is a record store, of course. And all the acts playing Rock and Rio have albums on sale here. One of the hottest moving items is probably by one of the groups with the hottest buzz at Rock and Rio, Guns N' Roses. Here they are. After almost a year of not playing together, they're back. They are performing at Rock and Rio. And we had a few words with Izzy, Izzy Stradlin the other day. And here's what he had to tell us. Izzy, are you thrilled? Yeah, very excited. <laughs> How excited are you? Uh, I'm into it. It must be great to get back together, right? Was it hard to get everybody together and say, we're going to go play this gig? Because you didn't have to, right? No, we didn't have to. It was something we wanted to do, I think. I, actually, it was kind of mixed. I don't know exactly who wanted to and who might not have wanted to, but um, everybody's here, you know. Did everything, did everything fall right into place as soon as you walked out on stage? Was yeah, it just like it was? Night, yeah, it was, it was great. It was, uh, you know, we hadn't played together with everybody for a while. And, uh, you know, we've got uh, Diz playing keyboards and Matt, you know, on drums. So. This first time we've all played like that. It was it was it was great. It felt so comfortable. New drummer tra changes the, the attack of a band. What is what has Matt done for the group? Um, as a drummer, I would say um, I don't know. It's good, you know. Is it different from Steven? 
Yeah, it's a different style, but uh, you know they're both good drummers, and uh, you know Matt's working good. Is he right too? I mean, is he contributes songs? Um, he hasn't with us. You know, he's been busy learning. You know, a lot of songs. I think 30 songs or something like that, as well as the band too. You know. So you're, the, you're the one that's actually been going out here in Rio and seeing yeah, stuff. You've been to yeah. any nightclubs? Isn't all night town, right? I haven't been to any nightclubs. I usually get out early. Uh, I went to boogie boarding down at uh, the beach somewhere where all the sewage goes in. They say I haven't seen any. How are the waves here? It's good, big crushers, you know. And uh, what else? Went to a skate park. They got a skate park here. It's like open. There's no admission fee or really? something like that. Yeah, there's no rules, nothing. You just go there and skate, like you, you know, go play tennis or something. I thought that was pretty cool. Did you come back here like on vacation? Have you ever had a vacation? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good place. I like it. So are you, are you the guy in the band that's in charge of getting everybody's butt together and saying, let's go do this, let's go do that? No, I don't think so. Not so much, you know? I'm usually the first one that wants to get on a plane though, like a day early or something. So let's go check the place out, you know, for the gig. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Are there any surprises in the set you're playing here in, uh, in Rio? Uh, every night, you know? I mean. Like, like we said, you know, there's a list of tunes and it's kind of, you know, whatever Axel's in the mood for, you know, seems appropriate. We, we know you're doing theme from The Godfather. Is there any other stuff like that that you've tried, like in rehearsals and uh, just didn't have the guts to do on stage? Fuck, I don't know. Slash, he's the one, he came up with that at rehearsal and I was kind of like, you know, I said, okay. Yeah, but like I said, I didn't get the point, you know, with Sweet Child of Mine. I think we ended up playing it before uh, um, Double Talk and Jive uh, the other Sunday, yeah. you know, so it was switched. So it's you know. never a dull moment with Guns N' Roses. Yeah. So I'm backstage here at Maracana Stadium with Duff and Slash of Guns N' Roses, who I think are the big hit of the uh, event, if I'm not mistaken. This is the very same one, too. How does it, how does it feel to be playing? <laughs> how does it feel to be playing your first gig since like last spring in front of like, 200,000 people? Does it make you nervous? Yeah. Real nervous? <laughs> um, no, everybody sucked jazz. We had, a, we had a great time. The band, one of the nicest things was we did the gig the other night and we all got in the dressing room and it was almost like a football team without a coach. <laughs> and uh, sort of like all hung out for a little while and, and went out and, and had a, I mean, for, for what it was, you know, we didn't have a set list or anything. We just threw it all together. And was <laughs> keyboard player, neither of them ever playing on stage with us before. It's like, you know, they have no idea how our formula is, right? Which is like non-formula. So we're looking at Matt going, play. He's like, what song? Uh, okay. You know, you know. It was, yeah, do a drum solo. Yeah, do a Matt's working out well, right? Yeah, Matt's great. If anybody can do it. So, yeah, we're all jazz. What kind of stuff are you playing here? What kind of stuff are we like playing? Your greatest hits, covers, any surprises? We have, like we, have a, we have a pick list, all the songs that we know, a little piece of paper on in front of the stage and we just sort of like pick them at random. New songs. We played Sweet Child New songs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we did. Yeah, we play like uh, like Jungle and Sweet Child, yeah. but I mean, half of it is new material. Yeah. People just kind of stare at us. We opened with a new song. <laughs> Does it sound as good when you when you do it as you thought it would? To us. To us. I mean, well, we know, you know the song. We, um, the record, um, Duff and Izzy and Matt and I, when we went, before we went into pre-production, we went to rehearsal and we worked all the songs out in a more or less live kind of a feel. So what happens now is we're, it's down to basics again, where it's like doing basic tracks. So it's whatever we did on basic tracks is what you're basically hearing out there. Could you give us some outro music, maybe a, a fast power chord or something? Because I think we're done. Back to <laughs> we'll be back with more reports from uh, Rock in Rio real soon. So keep watching MTV. <laughs> I said, I talked to my mom. She lives in Seattle before I went. She goes, you going where? I said, Rio. You know, I said, Rio, mom. You know, we're going to Rio. She goes, <laughs> she goes, watch your ass. Uh, I think we heard about it um, about four months ago or something, three months ago, four months ago. And we were right in the middle of doing our record, so it was kind of a pain in the ass. So, But I was done, and Matt was done, and we were done with the basic tracks. All we had to do was sing backgrounds and mix. So Matt and I had time to go in and start rehearsing. Slash was still in doing guitars. Slash and Izzy came in and it was like, you know, we had just got done getting Matt as a drummer. So Matt and I rehearsed together. It was great, great to finally get a drummer. Matt is just a solid drummer, you know, and he's, 
he's not like a kid like all like excited you know like shitting bricks you know when we go on stage in front of 140,000 people first time he's ever played with us you know and for that matter Dizzy the piano player he, who was actually kind of shitting bricks because the biggest crowd he ever played to was like 400 uh, Matt's he's I hate the word but he's a pro you know and for him to come into this band because we don't have a set list you know we just call it kind of call off songs if that you know or just kind of like somebody starts off the next song and we kind of told Matt that like five minutes before we went on this is not a set list by the way Matt it's a call list and by the way you're doing a drum solo tonight too you know so he can take the pressure <laughs> We don't know, night, you know, we're on tour. Um, we don't know if the whole band's going to be there, you know, at the gig. And it becomes like, just like a kind of joke, like a nervous kind of laughter joke, you know. What time are you guys going on? I don't know if we're even going to go on at all, you know, as we're opening for Aerosmith. You know, you just, you become accustomed to it, you know. How, how many songs are you going to play tonight? I don't know, maybe only two or three, you know. With all the differences the band has had and all that, when it comes down to it, you know, we do what we do best, and that's the right song to make music. And finally get it down on tape and release it. You know, that's really actually the hardest part is getting it on tape. But as far as writing songs and getting them to the point where we like them and rehearsing them to the point of where we can actually go into the studio and go, okay, we're ready for basics, we're ready to... You know, here's a song. We don't have any, you know, a lot of bands, most bands, I would say 95% of the bands have, like their producer, their hire producer, or their A&R guy or their manager will say, uh, oh, this song, you need to change here and there and this and that, and the band will go, okay. You know, we will take some constructive criticism, but we know what we want to write, you know. So, usually, if we get, if we change a song at all, it usually comes from, like, one of the road crew. You know, it's like, that part sucks, you know? He's using my bass ready, actually. There was a time when everything was really kind of dark and grim and hardcore. All the songs were like, and we were like, whoa. we go to rehearsal, rehearsal, everybody was wearing black and shit. <laughs> we didn't even notice it. It was like, Rrr. all the songs were about something kind of dark. But something is real. None of the songs are, like, written about. They're all, you know, basically nonfiction songs. Song called Why Do You Look at Me? And then in Asterix, When You Hate Me. It's about the press. It's like, you know, the words are, Why do you look at me when you hate me? You know, Why do you look at me when you know I hate you too? And it's about the press, you know, writing shit they have no idea about. And what, and so if they're getting so hardcore about us and they don't like us, why do they even write about us? You know, it has something to say about them, you know? They're looking for this record to absolutely suck and go you know tits up down the drain whatever um and i'm confident and fortunate enough to work with the guys that, you know to write songs with the guys that, in my band you know that and be positive enough that i know without them even hearing the songs yet that the yeah, album won't do that even if it's not successful sell wise which you know i don't really that not a proof of anything, you know. Some of my favorite albums only sold 10,000 copies, if that. You know, like a lot of other people say, oh, they've sold all these records, you know. And not looking through it to the music, you know, which a lot of people will jump to at first, just how many records we sold. It's a
Where's your night, MTV?